Radish Roman in his relative short career has experienced the many ups and downs associated with being a reinsman. Even before Roman became a licensed jockey, to the time he rode his first winner in 2018 on the Anthony Nunes trained, she's symbolic, the young man had one major objective on his mind, that of winning a classic race. He was able to achieve that feat on blue vinyl for trainer Patrick Lynch in the 2022 Jamaica 2000 Guineas. And as fate would have it, Roman added a second classic to his awards cabinet, again blue vinyl in the 2022 Jamaica St. Ledger. 10 furlongs and they're off and running. Brinks comes away on the rail with sunset silhouette, Emperor of the Cats also got a good start. Blue Vinyl is now tacking across to take those leaders on as they thunder past us for the first time. The pacemaker is Brinks up front from Blue Vinyl and Emperor of the Cats. Atomica is tugging and reserved right on their heels as they go into that clubhouse turn. Sunset Silhouette is well positioned on the rail, burning red in between horses. Outbidder race is next as they leave the mile. Power is a further three lengths in behind Outbidder. The head cornerstone runs next against the rail in the purple sleeves. The grey reins will come next. Mori Motor just in behind by a length. Slam toward the back of the field. Bro Rima has overtaken Slam and Slam now trails. They make their way toward the final six furlongs in the event and Atomica has now tugged through disputes that lead and gets it narrowly. Brinks continues to bounce easy in second. Blue Vinyl has them covered just about four lengths off that lead. Emperor of the Cats is a further two lengths down, burning red right on his tail. Outbidder now being niggled along a bit as they leave the five. Sunset Silhouette is further back with the head cornerstone. Power races up toward the back of the field. Rainsville races up next, then Morimoto. In behind them, Roraima and Slam outclassed at the back as the tempo increases in the ledger and they make their way toward the 716th and the Philly Atomica now goes on. Here is the match race evolving. Blue Vinyl pulling alongside and these two shoulder to shoulder as they leave the three in behind them. Briggs now looks to be feeling the heat but the match race is on. Inside the final 516th they're about to come into the lane in the St. Ledger Atomica the Philly in the centre. Blue Vinyl on the outside and Briggs tries to fight back over against the rail. Atomica swerves to the fence. Blue Vinyl has has the lead. Atomica trying to come on once again. Brinks is in behind them, but Blue Vinyl is driven to the max and holding the lead. Atomica, can she fight back? It is Blue Vinyl in the ledger, opening up two lengths. Atomica the filly. First time she's been tested and she's failed the test as Blue Vinyl comes away to score on the Radish Rome and Atomica has to settle for second. Brinks is third. Fourth, the head cornerstone. Morimoto has run on to be fit. Roman has been consistent, with some impressive performances in the saddle, including on January 28, 2023 a top Cistern treasure. The rough and racing came out in a good line, our angel outsped early, as Talona is ridden to take that lead as they pass the five. Talona in front of Luxol Racing in second, is that a fact paced on the rail, right beside is that a fact that Cistern treasure, then comes Tekka Punt, spread the great and the tailing off a bit as they pass the four, that's our angel. They come towards the uh, three furlong point and uh, making the running, it's a war up front, Luxol and uh, Talona, Talona still narrowly in front, Sister Treasure as the front two covered, right there against the rail and look to be backing out, that's, is that a fact? Coming on, that's Fred the Great as they come towards the two furlong point and it is still Talona fighting hard with Luxol on the rail coming on that sister and treasure making a good looking run but it's Salona and sister and treasure now it's the front sister and treasure and Luxol will fight this one out there coming to the furlong pole sister and treasure Luxol the battle is here sister and treasure not giving in Luxol digging in for a fight Luxol on the inside sister and treasure on the outside they're bobbing heads Luxol sister and treasure Luxol sister and treasure can it split them then comes Fred the Great and Talona. Jockey Radish Roman talks with the team from QuickGallop.com and its YouTube channel, The Quick Galloper, in this absorbing interview. Let's start at the beginning. How did Radish get to the, the love horse racing? Well, from my tender years, I was watching horse racing and see my older cousin Omar Walk and Kerry Gay Robinson riding and was coming to the track. And from there, I just fall in love with horse racing. And father and 
a elder by the name of Pam Pam carried me to Ian Passard stable and I start from there. What was the apprenticeship like there, learning the rudiments of the sport? Well, we start from there, we exercise right over there in the name Fire. Start. He's the one that teach me how to cross and put me on ass, teach me a few things along the journey. And it developed from there. When yeah. exactly was that? What year? I'm not quite to remember about, about nine to ten years old. Nine to ten years. And how long did it take you to get your apprentice license? Well never really take that long because in the process I was moving forward and I get it like in about one or two year time mm -hmm. because the badge was about to come out and that tried my best to catch it. Um, so which, which batch of apprentices you, you graduated with? Who were some of the riders? Um, 2018, Tevin Foster, R. Lewis, Christopher Mamdeen, Kieman, McGregor, Raja Yuit, okay. and more. Yeah, good batch. So how has it been for you since? You enjoy what you're doing? Well then, I'm enjoying doing what I'm doing right now. I just have a love for the animals and the sport, so keep me going. Mm. Last year was a particularly good year for you. Yeah, it was a very good year because before I became a jockey, the dream was to, to become a jockey and win classic races. And, and you realized that last year, what was the feeling after you won the, the, the 2000 Guinness? It was a very overwhelming feeling, cannot explain the feeling because I've been dreaming about this and it came to reality which surprised me. Mm. And you also won the St. Leisure too, I believe, right? Yeah. Um, that was an epic battle with, with Atomica. Tell me about that race. Well, it was a very exciting race because the two animals them have their fans, some say Blue Vinyl, some say Atomica. So we have to just go out there and put a mindset to it and know we only can have one winner. And it happened as me come out and tap and I. Very glad for that. You were a very confident race. Were you always confident in that in that event? I was always confident because the trainer was schooling me from day one and tell me say just don't get head lighty, just keep a calm mind and come into the race what is to be must be and just ride a patient race. All in my bag, the don't make the filly steal away from me. Mm -hmm. Didn't quite work out in the derby though. The tables were turned. Yeah, racing. <laughs> Cannot complain. <laughs> I have nothing to say in the derby, but it does one of those things. One I wish they didn't want to win the chipper crown, but never work out. We yeah. have to just re. You were so close. Yeah. Radish, as a young rider here, and obviously someone who wants to improve and to, I'm sure you have ambitions of getting even further, probably win championships and that kind of thing. Who are some of the jockeys here, senior riders you would have admired and look up to and try to emulate? Well, from a long time, I see Trevor Simpson, um, I see Winston Griffiths, I hear about Bimbo and George Sang and more, but never really see them ride, but I see Omar Walker, DNL, so Shane Ellis. And a very good more rider like Wesleyan and Bellingham. So you try to copy stuff from them to learn from them? Well then I watch replays I watch replay of race hard and try to figure out where I make my mistakes and what I can do to correct it and watch others Jackie from overseas and stuff. Mm -hmm. That's very good. That's On very that good. note, do you have relatives involved in racing? Well I have a quite a couple like in the Jackie section, Omar Walker. Ryan Lewis, which me and him start riding right, the same year, Kerry Gay Robinson, and trainers as well, and owners. What can Radish's fans look forward to in 2023 and beyond? Well, from I get the live and good rides, I know I can deliver and great things will happen from I get the live rides. Tell me something, Radish. You have some jockeys who prefer and are known for riding leaders, some sitting in mid-pack. Uh, Hubert Bartley is renowned for coming from behind. You know, good time of the race. Which you prefer? Not really matter what people said. Ride leader and mid-packers the best. Mostly leaders, but 
it not really matter from the ass of goings and they get a good position. Deliver from anywhere in the race. And I'm sure you would have been told that you have good hands. You know, you can get them out relaxed yeah. and, and quickly. I've, <laughs> I hear that a lot. Was and it something you worked on or it just came naturally? I just natural, it just came naturally. Mm-hmm. It just came naturally. So you don't mind whether it's a leader, mid pack horse or on us, you think you can get it done? Just yeah, so. yeah, it not really, you know, mind where I'm coming from, from him have run in when I ask him to run, I know I can get the job done. Mm-hmm. Are you attached to any particular stable or you ride for any trainer? Well, I'm all the road now, I'm riding for every trainer No. And, and you believe by doing that, you will get some live rides as long as you get the support from the trainers? Exactly. Young career still, which would have been the best house you think you would have written? I have to say blue final. Blue final. <laughs> no doubt about it. And having come so close to winning your first derby, having won two classics last year, I'm sure you must be eager for the 2023 season to come around and you know to try and get back there. <laughs> well, well, I'm just hoping I get a good one that can represent me in the classic this season. You think you're finding it? I'm no still looking, but you never know what can happen. My just dropping the hands of me like blue vinyl as wise. Never expect blue vinyl to come away and it just come. Roman hopes to make an even bigger splash in 2023, and with two classics already in his saddlebag, the racing public waits to see how this story unfolds during the course of this season. Thank you for watching another video produced by the team from quickgallop.com, YouTube channel, The Quick Galloper. Please stay on the channel for more enlightening videos on those involved in local horse racing. Please like, subscribe, and press the notification bell.